Today, I want to talk about how to quickly improve your art. I came up with a list of 10 things that you can do to instantly up your illustration game. So these are things that I personally did in the past to become a better artist, and I believe strongly in them. I believe that if you apply them to your daily workflow and to your daily routine, you will see improvements very quickly. And so I just want to share them with you. And hopefully by the end of this video, you will have somewhat of a game plan and know what to do next in order to become a better artist. All right, so number one on my list is daily sketching. You should be sketching every day. Daily sketching is one of the best habits to have. If you're able to adopt this habit to your daily um, routine, you will see improvements very quickly. So what I would do if I was starting out, and I even do this up until today, is I buy cheap sketchbooks. And the reason for that is if, let's say I buy a very expensive sketchbook, one of these mold skins that are about $30, then it kind of builds a pressure in me because I'm afraid to kind of mess up. I don't want to waste this expensive paper, you know? So I invest in cheap sketchbooks, cheap pencils that kind of free me up from that pressure. It kind of loosens me up and it allows me to be more creative, to be more bold and, and brave in the things that I want to do. So I get to experiment way more because I don't have that fear of wasting art materials anymore. Number two is don't stop drawing. So I know there will be difficult times, times where you struggle and you don't know what to do next or how to solve a specific issue. And uh, the key here is consistency. Never stop drawing and don't go on like a month long vacation from drawing. It never helps and it never works. So even when times get a little bit rough or difficult, just keep drawing and try to find solutions to your problems. So if you're having difficulties drawing something, then try to like find a way to, to overcome it. Look up in anatomy books. For example, if you're having problems drawing, drawing anatomy, then look it up and see if you can find a solution for it. But just never stop drawing. This is like one of the key factors why people fail in anything in life is because they give up too soon. So never stop drawing and don't go on a vacation for like two or three months without drawing. Another thing to remember is that if something has given you a hard time, then see it as an opportunity to expand your skill set. So if there's a problem you can't solve, it's always a chance to kind of become better, to um, learn something new from it. And so it's always an opportunity. Whenever there's something you're struggling with, it's an opportunity to become a better person, a better artist, um, better in anything that you're trying to achieve. Number three on my list is to study the fundamentals of art. To me, it's very important to know the basics of anatomy, composition, perspective, and color theory. These are the fundamentals of art, and it's very important that you have an understanding of them. Because let's say you have this awesome idea in your head, and you want to bring it to life. You want to put it onto paper. That becomes very difficult if you have no understanding of the things you're trying to draw. But if you know the basics of anatomy, let's say, then it becomes much easier to draw a character, a, a full figure, and to kind of make it look believable. If you know perspective, you can draw a city or a house or cars. If you know color theory, you can make your images come to life with color and you know how to use them properly. And all these things combined will make you a better artist. So I believe this is one of the most important things to do. And in the beginning, you don't need to kind of study the advanced things. Just start with the basics and you'll see a huge improvement in the look of your art. And I know it can be boring to study things like anatomy, especially anatomy, because it's such a, a dry subject. It's really not exciting in any way, at least not to me. But the more you know of it, the, the more you can express yourself. And another thing I want to mention is that studying or learning should never be something that you do once and then you, you just kind of neglect it. Learning should be a lifelong activity. And this doesn't only apply to art, it, it applies to life even more so. 
So never stop learning, always be curious and never think that you know it all. So number four on my list is to forget about perfection. And I know this sounds easy, but it's so difficult to do. I even struggle with this um, like every day because you're always trying to get rid of your flaws, of your weaknesses. But um, sometimes it's very important to kind of own your flaws, to own your weaknesses and to make them part of your art. The reason I'm saying this is for one, I believe that perfection is the ultimate killer of any productivity, any creativity and of all of the fun that you're having when drawing. Another reason why you shouldn't focus on, on perfection is because think about it, if we all were perfect, if we all drew super realistic, then would there be any diversity? Would there be any art style? And in my opinion, I don't think so. I think we would all be pretty much the same because we would be drawing the same things and the same style because we would be copying reality. So I wouldn't focus too much on perfection especially if you're trying to create your own voice, if you're trying to have a very unique art style that stands out from the crowd. So number five is drawing from reference. Many people, especially beginners, it's so weird because the professionals don't talk about this very often. They actually use it to their own advantage. But many amateurs, they kind of think that using reference is cheating and they actually call out other people. They're like, hey, why are you using reference? It's cheating and stuff like that. And it's really not. Using reference is a smart way to, to improve the quality of your art. So if you look at like most comic book artists, they use reference, they even take pictures of themselves and then use that as a helping guide to draw whatever it is that they need to draw. So the important thing to remember when using reference is that it's not about making a perfect copy of the reference. Use the reference to your advantage. Use it as an inspiration or as a guide. For example, if you find a reference and you like the pose, then only use the reference for the pose. Or if you like the look of somebody, then kind of get inspired by it but don't make an exact copy of that picture. As long as you're doing that, I think it's a very clever, a, a very efficient way of using reference for your art because you're gonna step up the quality of your art because it's gonna be more correct and it's gonna help you with the proportions, with the anatomy, with the expression and um, with the colors, for example. It can help you in so many ways. So number six on my list is to be brutally honest with yourself. And this is so, so important. So listen, I know it's great and it feels great whenever you draw something that looks good, something you're satisfied with, but don't dwell on it for too long. You need to be your own worst critic. Worst critic is probably the wrong word here, but you need to be honest with yourself to the point where you analyze your art, like really analyze it and see the weaknesses in it, the things that bother you and then try to fix them. And so don't go ahead and say like, I'm unhappy with the entire picture. That's not the way to go about it. Look at specific parts of your drawing. So for example, if you, if you don't like the way you draw hands, if you, don't, if you don't like the way you draw ears or eyes or hair, then look at that specific portion of your drawing and then try to improve that part. Try to like actively work on that part and really focus in on it. So what I would do is, so let's say I'm drawing something and I'm happy with it. I would then go in and, and look for weak parts in the drawing, things that I would wish um, were better. And then I take that part and I focus on it. So for example, if I have difficulties drawing hair or if I think they could be better, then I would spend the next couple of days just trying to improve that part. Anything else would be just like resting in your comfort zone. Number seven is something that many people are scared of, but I think it's super important to do so. And that is to share your art with others. What helped me tremendously is to upload my art to online forums, to social media, and to get feedback from others and to expose myself to the risk of being ridiculed. So I know it doesn't sound fun, but trust me. So 
One thing to remember when you're posting things online is there are going to be trolls, people that have negative intentions. Don't take those comments personally. And it's very easy to spot them. Most of the time, it's really not useful, the things that they're telling you. It's just something to bash you, to kind of bring you down. Don't take these things personally. Don't even listen to these people. But on the other hand, when you're posting artwork online and you see comments that are like polite and friendly and very helpful, then take that to heart and try to focus on these things. Try to kind of apply these things to your art and, 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 and fix the things that people are telling you. If, if you're able to listen to feedback, if you're able to learn from it, you can see such a huge step forward in the quality of your art. It, it's just crazy and unbelievable. And it took me a while to realize this because in the beginning, I was like super afraid to upload my art online or to even show it to strangers just because I was so afraid that they were going to laugh, that they were going to spot my mistakes and um, just going to think that I'm a fool or whatever. So it's really not like that. As I said before, most people are very polite. You would be surprised how many would actually like to help you in, in becoming a better artist. I would say go out there, share your art, promote your own art, talk about it, talk to others, let the world see your stuff and see where it takes you. Number eight is to copy other artists. So copying other artists, to me personally, is one of the best and most efficient ways of improving the quality of your work. When you're copying another artist, it really depends on the quality of their work. So I would advise that you have very high standards. So whenever you're copying somebody, put your standards up there. Don't just copy any like amateur out there. And I'm, I'm not trying to talk bad about anybody, but the higher your standards are, um, the more you're going to expect from yourself. Always look for somebody who's way better than you are and then try to reach their level or try to come close. And so by copying other artists, you kind of get a feeling for their style, how they could have constructed that image. And so really actively think about that. Think about what could they have done to create this image? What were the steps that they could have taken to come to the final result? And then also what's even more important is to not only copy one artist, copy many different artists. And once you combine these things, once you combine these different influences, it's going to create, like it's essentially going to create a new style. It's going to create something unique, something that hasn't been there before. And that's actually also a very effective way of creating or finding your own art style. And so one thing to remember about art styles, and this is something that many beginners don't think about or they don't see it that way, is that an art style never stays the same, or at least it shouldn't. It should always change and get better over time. Um, so don't think of it as this final thing, this final product, and once you have it, that's it. That's just what it is. It's not like that. It actually changes over time as you change as an artist. So number nine is to participate in challenges. So with challenges, I mean things like Inktober or Draw This In Your Style. These are great opportunities to become better and to expose yourself to a competitive setting. Being in this light competition really helps in kind of pushing yourself to perform even better than you would do usually. And so number 10 is repetition. So repetition is just doing the things that I mentioned before over and over and over again. So you should never stop doing these things. These are like as I said, lifelong activities. You should never stop learning, never stop trying to improve yourself. You never want to reach a point where you're totally satisfied with the things that you're creating. You always want to reach for more, for higher standards, for more quality. Always expect more from yourself. Don't just go with whatever you have at that time with the skill set you have acquired. Always try to become better. For example, when I started out, I always thought that once I'm artist XYZ, 
then I'm going to be happy and, and that's it. But once I've reached that level, I already had new plans. I had new goals. I wanted to be even better. And I thought of myself that I wasn't good enough, even though I've reached that point that I wanted in the beginning. So never think of it as this ultimate goal. And once you've reached it, you, you've made it and that's it. That's not a good mindset to have. You always want to reach for more. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. If you're not a subscriber to my YouTube channel, then I would be super happy if you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, any comments, leave a comment below. And as always, guys, you know the drill. I love you with all my fart and soul. Peace.